So thank you for your coming to this session. And I'm Takashi Kazunami from Japan, from Entity Data. And, and I'm a platform engineer in Entity Data. So I'm so glad and excited to get a chance for introducing our activity about OpenStack Swift to you. And in this uh, project, we construct a multi-regional, multi-petabyte, and multi-clustered OpenStack, uh, OpenStack Swift object storage. So it was so big project, and there was some challenges in that project. So today I introduce what we did in the project and I hope that my presentation will be a help who just started your working on OpenStack Swift. So Okay, so let me start with the disclaimer of this presentation. So first, any product name, service name, software name, and other marks are trade marks of registered mark of corresponding companies. So and the second, this presentation is the purpose of providing the knowledge gained from our first and biggest Swift project. So in this project, I particularly focus on our challenge and the solutions for them in the project, and what we faced, what we considered, and what we did in that project. So the finally, a presenter on the Entity Data Corporation provide the information in as its basis and have no responsiveness for results that you got according to information in this presentation material. Of course, situations should be different in each project, so we cannot guarantee your complete success in your, in your project. But however, I'm pretty glad if this presentation will be a part of help for you who just started or are now planning for your Swift project. So first of all, I will uh, I'll shortly introduce myself and ourselves. So I'm Takashi Kajunami, and I'm a platform engineer in Entity Data. So Entity Data is a subsidiary of Entity, and Japanese system integration company who mainly works on the construction of IT systems. So in Entity Data, our sector is something like OSS professional team, and mainly focus on the open source software to construct the system. So we are working on like PostgreSQL, uh, I think. The presentation. Okay, okay, now the presentation has changed. So we are working on PostgreSQL or Hadoop or HNMOS and so on, including OpenStack. So our team is particularly focused on OpenStack Swift and provide cloud storage solution toward by OpenStack Swift. So here I show my agenda for my presentation. So first, I will shortly about, uh, talk about three key features about OpenStack Swift, so I will talk about OpenStack Swift shortly, and then I move my focus to our OpenStack Swift project and explain our four big challenges and solutions for them in that project. Then finally, I summarize our activity in the project and introduce our future vision with Swift. So the OpenStack Swift. So OpenStack Swift is a part of OpenStack project and it's a storage project. So Swift, OpenStack Swift realized distributed object storage like Amazon S3. And object storage is a new style storage with different interface from conventional like uh, something like block storage or file systems. And then Swift provides RESTful API and clients can upload data into storage as put request and download data from storage as get request. So this REST API works on the HTTP protocol. And so Swift is often used as archiving storage for web contents like photo and video or storage for backup data or archiving data. So Swift has many, many uh, good features, but I Today, I have not so much time to explain. So I'll talk about three key features of Swift. The three things, durability, scalability, and openness. The first, uh, Swift, uh, the first key feature is the durability. So Swift makes some copies in, of data in storage cluster, for example, three copies, and distribute copies of uh, devices, nodes, and racks as uniquely as possible. So even if some parts of Swift cluster fails, you can protect data from failures and continue to access all of the data with remaining copies. In addition, Swift also automatically detects disk defeats and heal missing data copies in other devices working properly. 
recently from Grizzly and Havana release, so it gets global cluster features. So feature enables geographically distributed storage cluster over multiple data centers to realize disaster recovery. So now you can uh, overcome all of the, these kind of defeats. The second feature is scalability. So Swift distributed data over multiple devices, and when you add new devices, it rebalances data to the new devices. So when you enlarge capacity, so you can enlarge your Swift cluster's capacity and improve performance of a Swift cluster by adding new nodes, adding new devices to your cluster. And we can extend the storage from a small capacity like 10 terabytes to huge capacity like dozens of petabytes. So in addition, there are no limitations of the number in the number of devices you can add. So you can extend the switch cluster flexibly. So you can add capacity as much as you need when you need it. And you can adapt your storage to unpredictable market situation with effective cost. The last key feature is uh, the openness. So Swift is the open source software, and it works on Python framework. So you can drive it on commodity IA servers and Linux. So you don't need any special devices for Swift, and you can select cost-effective hardware to construct huge storage cluster. In addition, you can flexibly mix some types of servers in and you can select cost-effective hardware to construct huge uh, storage. So as uh, described in this figure, you can mix some types of hardware as, uh, and construct uh, one huge Swift cluster. So you can add the latest servers when you extend. And the, uh, on the other hand, you can remove all the servers when they get broken after their maintenance period. So you can keep your Swift cluster for a long time, regardless on the maintenance period of servers, with replacing all the servers to new servers. OK, so now I've explain, explained about three key features of Swift. And then let me, uh, let me move to our project. So our project was the migration project from existing high-end storage to distribute, uh, distributed storage. So this storage serves as a back-end storage for application in communication platform company and stores more than petabytes data from more than 10 million end users. So this project required high durability, including disaster recovery and then uh, scalability and cost optimization for storage, and our customers selected to, uh, selected to use Swift. This project was so exciting, so cool project, but as you know, we can finish no project without any challenges. So in this project, there are four big challenges, which I show in this slide. And then I will explain about these challenges more in detail, and also our solutions for them. The first challenge is the uh, assurance of data durability of Swift. So Japanese customers are often very sensitive about the quality of the system, and our customers are extremely super quality crazy customers. So in their system, at uh, their culture, system design is a very important thing, and everything should be under control in their system. And you should design behavior of the system, not only in normal situation, but also in failure situation. So in Swift, it's not so easy thing to design all of the behavior because Swift is a distributed system and many components on the many servers co-work to build uh, the whole function. But we have to analyze every behavior before building the system. That was a big uh, problem we faced first. To solve this problem, so we considered, uh, we tried to overcome that problem, and we decided to do the recovery test. So we made hundreds of test cases based on three aspects So described in this slide. The first one is the point of failure. So we changed the point of failure like disks, like nodes, process. And then the second point is the number of failure. So the Swift has a copy. Uh, Swift copies data. 
uh, over devices, so the number of failure is one point which changes the behavior of Swift. So we change the uh, number of failure like one, two, three, four, and we tested these varieties of numbers. And then the last point is a range of failure. So there are some failure domain in Swift, and it distributes data over disk, over nodes, over racks, over uh, uh, geographical location. So the range of failure may change the behavior of Swift. So we tested it. In addition to VR testing, we checked source code of Swift with comparing the result of the testing and extract uh, core logic of Swift, which defines behavior of Swift. So as a result of uh, this recovery test, we completely analyze behavior of Swift and ensure its extreme durability, availability, and recoverability. Swift can keep data and continues to work well even if there are no sniper who accurately breaks that three hard disk drives storing the same data from thousands of hard disk drives or no big disaster which suffers all over your data centers. Okay, so now the first challenge is solved, and then we face the second challenge. So our second challenge is the global distribution. So disaster recovery is required in this project. So there are many, many customers who are uh, interested in disaster recovery in Japan, and our customers are one of that such kind of customer. And we decided to distribute function data of Swift over three sites, like figured in this slide. So we place two proxies. So we distribute two proxy cluster over two sites and storage cluster uh, also distribute storage cluster over two sites. So each data center is more than 300 kilometers away from another one. So you can keep an uh, access to data. And even if one of the sites downs because of unexpected disaster. Now the placement is decided, but we have to check if Swift works well on such distributed construction. So we have two points we have that we have to evaluate to realize this global distribution. So the first one is client request. So when client requests some, requests some process to Swift, so proxy server talks to storage server and all the process or transfer data. So in global construction, latency between proxy and storage may affect this token. The second one is durability. So in Swift, each storage node talks to another one to ensure all copies are stored in the other one. So and in global distributed cluster, they have to talk over network with latency, so we have to ensure that effect of latency. So to test globally distributed Swift cluster like I figured in the previous slide, so we constructed showed this global cluster with simulated network latency. So we constructed this kind uh, showed global cluster figured in this pr uh, slide, and we test this cluster. So we assumed the proxy server and the Swiss switch servers were placed in different locations and the simulated network latency among them. So we changed the simulated latency from 10 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds and check how behavior of switch changes. Uh, TC is used to simulate network latency. For example, when you want to set 10 milliseconds latency, you set 5 milliseconds latency for one way, then for round trip, 10 milliseconds latency is set. So with this should global cluster, we tested two things. The first, to ensure that Swift can serve for client requests properly, we tested object putting and getting and deleting on this should uh, global cluster. So we checked its health by error rate of request and performance by uh, turnaround time of one request and throughput and evaluate the effect of latency between proxy and storage. And second, to uh, ensure the durability of global construction, so we tested auto recovery feature of object replicator, so which recovery, uh, which recover object data lost because of this failure. So we checked 
we also check its fails by error rate of in object replicator and the performance of object replicator by turnaround time of one thing process and throughput, and evaluate the effect of latency between station nodes. Okay, so here I show a result of our global cluster, uh, the first global cluster testing for client request. So there are no error caused by latency, so Swift works well on network with latency. So as you can uh, imagine, so response time is degrades as latency grows up, but you can realize effective throughput and uh, with concurrency. So I if you use concurrency, request, you can get effective throughput. So we make application on the Swift to send the concurrent request to Swift and get effective throughput in that project. So we also make some formulation about turnaround time on the latency and estimate turn, uh, how long does it take to serve one request and to decide a proper timeout parameter in that application. Okay, so then I will show you a uh, second result, so our result for object replicator testing. So we can see result is very similar to one for client request. So there are no error caused by latency, and performance of one thing process degrades as latency grows up. But you can realize effective throughput with concurrent processing. So we increase the concurrency of object replicator to get effective throughput of auto recovery in order to ensure its durability. Okay, then the third challenge. So the third challenge is the quality and delivery problem. So how in this project, we have to build hundreds of Swift nodes in two weeks. It's not so long time for building such huge number of nodes. In addition, there are so many customer rules about operation. For example, you should type all of the commands by your hands, and you should check if your command finishes successfully in each step. You should check files before you edit them, and so on. So we noticed that we cannot keep delivery with uh, manual building in such rule. So to solve this delivery problem, we constructed our automated building tools for Swift nodes. So with this tool, we can automatically install softwares on servers and configure all of them. So we use Kickstart for installing and Puppet for configuration and install about 10 softwares, including OS, Swift, and the monitoring software, and so on, and then generates 50 configurations of uh, all of OS function and other softwares. Okay, so with this automated building tool, we realize the speed up of our building, and now we can build more than 200 nodes in one day. So this speed is about 100 times as fast as manual building used to do. So in addition, uh, in addition to the speeding up, so we also improve the quality of building by eliminating human error in building process. So human sometimes makes mistakes like typo of commands or skipping of lines and so on. So in this tool, everything is automated and all you have to do is uh, start your building tool. So you can elaborate the quality before you build actual environment by testing building tools in your test environment. Okay, so now uh, we can build all of the Swift nodes within the time limit, and everything seems to work well. But unfortunately, we asked more from our customers. So our quality crazy customers now uh, never get satisfied with our saying, now everything seems to work well. They also never allow our saying, everything's work, uh, everything works well. So they demand proof. So they have to uh, we have to prove that everything works properly. In Swift, we have two aspects about this proof. The first one is API. So we have to prove that Swift cluster working properly as a whole cluster. The second one is Node. So we have to prove that all of Swift nodes works properly. We have to check these aspects in building process. And as you imagine, so there are, no, uh, there are so many things we have to check. 
but unfortunately, we didn't have no more time. So we have to build and test Swift cluster in two weeks. It's a big problem. It was so big problem in this project. So how did we do that? What to go? Okay, so our solution is the automation of the testing. So in this test, uh, in this project, to solve this big uh, quality and delivery problem. We also constructed automated to testing tools in addition to automated building tool. So within this testing tool, we can test response from Swift cluster and all responses from Swift nodes, including not only normal responses, but also error responses, something like client error or server error. To realize this testing, we extended Tempest to, to test error uh, to test error cases and made the other check to, to take check behavior of all of Swift nodes in the cluster. Okay, so now with testing tool, we can prove that Swift works properly and ensure that the quality of building. So we realized complete coverage about Swift API, while we also realized complete coverage about Swift nodes. So everything is tested and proved to work properly. So in addition, all tests are executing automatically, as I said, and we can test everything in short time. So in this project, we can test one Swift cluster which consists of, which consists of uh, 70 Swift nodes in one hour, only in one hour. Okay, so the last challenge, so the fourth challenge in the project is the backup. And I think it was the most special challenge in this project. So in this project, Swift system stores end users data, so we have to do everything we, that we can do for saving such data. So as I explained it, as one of the key features of Swift, Swift is very durable for hardware failures, but not perfectly durable for external incidents like application bug or operator's mistake. So to save data from these external incidents, we have to back up data and keep data at the in other independent external storage and realize restoring data from that storage. Okay, so we decided to place backup storage in one of three sites and take backup from distributed Swift cluster to gather backup storage. So it was not so uh, easy thing, and there are some points we have to consider. So I will introduce some points we consider to build this backup system. So okay, so I now show the some requirements in our solution for backup. So the first point, we have to consider scalability of the backup storage. So the Swift is a very scalable storage, so the backup storage should adapt to its scalability. So because backup data grows, grows up as data in Swift goals. So then we did decided to use Swift as a backup storage and focus on container sync, which is used for data synchronization between two Swift clusters to realize backup data between two Swift clusters. The second requirement, uh, requirement point is completeness. So Swift works on the principle of eventual consistency, and you cannot get complete backup from one part of Swift. To solve this problem, we did drive agent processes um, in all of Swift storage nodes and find all data in Swift cluster and get backup. The third point is a reduction of the capacity. So now you have the three replicas in primary. So it is a little bit too expensive to have uh, similarly three replicas in backup storage. So then we reduce re uh, redundancy of the object in backup storage to one replica and we realize re backup features. So this uh, so when the fail happens in the re uh, backup storage, we can back up some lost data again with such uh, re backup feature. So the last one is the network consumption. So we as we show in in the previous uh, slide. So the primary Swift cluster is distributed over two sites, and we have to uh, gather the data to one, uh, gather the storage in one site. So, 
So in our backup system, we first backup data inside one site and then check data over sites. Okay, so we, I show the feature. Okay, so as a result, we constructed backup system named container backup, as I showed in this slide. So container backup is developed based on container sync, and it has an agent process in all storage nodes, and check all data in Swift cluster, and backup data to another Swift cluster. So we have manager process to control all agent and execute backup as a batch job. So with this feature, we can control the order of region where agent works. So first, we start agent in the same sites as a backup Swift cluster and transport all of object, and then start uh, agent in the other site to check data in uh, uh, backup storage and ensure uh, completeness of the backup. So now we solved all challenges. Okay, so to ensure data, we tested, uh, we did a recovery test in variety of failure situation to realize uh, the second to realize a geographically distributed cluster. So we made uh, constructed shared uh, geographically distributed cluster and tested it, and. For delivery and quality uh, problem, we constructed automated building and testing tools and automatically build and test the Swift cluster. And finally, for backups, so we, we made the backup system between two Swift clusters based on container sync. Okay, so here I show you a uh, detailed system construction. So we constructed Swiss, uh, six Swift clusters, three for primary and three for backup. And the primary Swift clusters are distributed over three sites and has three petabyte capacity for each. And backup cluster are gathered in one site and has one petabyte capacity for each. We also set monitoring system and the visualizing system of system performance and resource consumption. And we also set configuration manager in each site. Okay, so with these solutions, we successfully finished our deployment project. So we, we finished without any death march and keep on, uh, keep on time release. So today, storage system is working properly. And I have now uh, the latest data. So today, our Swift cluster serves about 50 million GET requests, uh, 15,000 PUT requests, and uh, 500,000 delete requests per data, uh, per cluster per day. And we have three Swift clusters, so they serve thought as much as request as a whole. And everything seems to work well. But there are, of course, there are other small problems in that project. So today I will introduce three uh, important examples of them. The first problem was about the behavior of Swift. So in Swift, there are some processes on some nodes, and sometimes race condition uh, crashes between them causes error. For example, the fan client update, update uh, fan client send upgrade request about object. Just when object auditor starts to check the same object, then object auditor fails to touch the object and generate quarantine file. And end up, which end up with the system a lot. So we tested enormous uh, defeat cases, but it is very difficult to test all of these kind of race conditions. The second problem is about global distribution. So in the production environment, we faced uh, the situation that connection timeout between proxy and the switch sometimes caused error, although we tested and ensured that the switch works with latency. So then we checked 1 million TCP dump records with our eye and know, uh, to know why such timeout happens and found some loss of same packets which causes the connection timeouts. So in the production environment, there are so many network e uh, equipment between two nodes, and some packet loss happens between these equipments. This packet loss are important thing, and we have to cons uh, we have to s consider them when we construct globally distributed Swift cluster. So as a solution for this problem, we raise the timeout. Uh, threshold to timeout 
of time and back and backports some behavior from Havana release, Swift Havana release, which makes Swift to use hand of nodes more effectively when connection timeout happens. Okay, then the third problem is about performance tuning. So we used cost-effective servers with no SSD, but it's not easy to get effective performance using hardware with low I.O. performance. To improve performance of Swift cluster, we tune some parameters from two aspects. The first one is uh, about the thread and process, and we reduce the number of green threads and raise the number of process process in object server demo. So green thread switches context effectively for network uh, I.O. input output, or doesn't switches for disk I.O. So when you use hardware with low disk I.O., performance, disk, uh, performance of disk often be a bottleneck of the whole performance, and the green threads sometimes stuck for disk I.O. processing. So to avoid this stack, we use process model, and now scheduler of Swift effectively switches the context for disk I/O. The second point is uh, speed parameter in backend process. So there are some processes working on Swift cluster, and we can categorize them into two classes. So one is the front-end process, which works for the which works to solve for client requests, like proxy server or account server, container server, so such kind of server demons. So the other is back-end process, which works to keep consistency of data in Swift, like replicator or auditor and updater, and so on. So in hardware with such limited disk I.O. performance, we should slow down the back-end process to keep effective results for front-end processes. So we checked back the all back-end processes and check the resource consuming uh, consumption. So as a result, there are two dominant resource consumer. So the first one is the object auditor, which mainly consumes the bandwidth of the disk I.O. And the other is DB replicator, which mainly uh, consumes the IOPS of disk uh, devices. So we set, uh, we s limited the speed of this kind of uh, con uh, resource consuming processes to save re uh, resources to for front end process to keep uh, effective performance for client requests. Okay, so now we finished everything. So we completely satisfied for our customers' requirements and solved all other problems. So we raised system on time. So in addition to the success of the project, there were some other good things. So the first one, the we contributed the OpenStack project with some patches to fix some bugs bugs we found in the, uh, in testing. And now I'm, now I'm listed as a contributor in you know release. And what is the most important, I got my session in this summit and now I can here. I can be here. I can come to Paris. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so at the end of my presentation, I will explain what we now think about our future vision. So the first vision is about automation. So in this project, so we constructed automated building and testing, and we are now trying to make them more general one. So in particular, there are many other things we should automate in testing, like recovery test and race condition testing and so on. So but in particular, the recovery, te uh, recovery test is so time consuming because there are so many, many uh, test cases. So we want now we are trying to automate this kind of testing. I think the operation is also another thing we can do more with uh, automation. Uh, we we have more thing we can automate to effective operation. The second vision is uh, about re uh, resource management. So in this project, the performance tuning was uh, one of the problem, and we struggled limit to limit resource consumption of backend processes. So now we have some plan to do such a limitation more intelligently. So with using something like C groups, which uh, we can limit with which we can limit 
resource consumption flexibly. The third vision is about new feature. So we used Grizzly version in our project, but there are some additional features in today's latest release, like storage policy and erasure coding and so on. So we are very interested in them and have some plan for update of our solution to realize more effective usage of capacity. Okay, so then we have also another big vision about uh, Swift about especially about practical practical use of data. So Swift can store, uh, Swift can be a storage and for huge data, but it it is not so easy thing to use this huge data effectively. So it becomes more and more difficult to find out data. Uh, it it becomes more and more difficult to find out data you really need as data in the storage grows up. So now we are working on metadata search in Swift, which integrates search features into Swift. So with this new feature, we try to realize more effective, efficient use of data within Swift. Okay. Okay, that's all for my presentation. So, if there are any questions about that? Mm -hmm. I'd like to know how, what kind of parameters you try to monitor actually. Mm -hmm. so Monitoring? About mon yeah. To determine the health of the services as well as the nodes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are you sure? So just a moment. So okay. So this uh, this slide shows about the monitoring and the visualization system in this. And uh, in this position, I didn't um, s talk about uh, talk about this in detail. So we constructed monitoring system with Nagios and the visual uh, visualizing system with Ganglia, and we tested all of the services on node in with monitoring system and the visualizing system to check uh, if the all of the no Swift nodes working properly. And in addition to this, we also check the service to uh, service of the Swift through proxy server. And we also check the Swift cluster uh, works properly as a whole. Server you used for that? Data and our pro proxy, object server and proxy? Object servers means you Pardon? separated the proxy server from the object servers, right? You, how mm -hmm. did you distribute the? Yeah, so uh, yes, all uh, okay. So these nodes are distributed. So we have two strategies for monitoring them. So we set three monitoring uh, server in three sites, and then check each of them are checking on the node in the same site. And also, we to check the whole function of Swift, we also use the monitoring system in near to the proxy server and send a request to the proxy server to check the whole function of the Swift. I'm not asking for the uh, hmm? monitoring. I'm asking for the uh, proxy and account and container and object. These are four major services. So you separated the proxy from the uh, uh, account container and an object. How did you deploy account container and object? What is the ratio between the proxy and the object servers? Did you deploy account container object together, or did you deploy proxy? Uh, did you deploy it with the proxy? What was the configuration you used for that? Ah, okay. So now uh, your question is: We have two proxy servers. So what? Uh, what I configured for use two of these proxy servers, right? Ah, okay, okay, so, uh, so we show uh, the proxy and the storage figured in this slide. And in proxy, uh, proxy server daemon is working, and the other, like our account server or container server or object servers are working in the storage. Is that enough for your question? I'll talk to you. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um. So, here. Mm -hmm. I'm on this side. Okay. Sorry. 
Uh, so I have a question about your backup use case. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that one of the use cases is to protect against um, mm -hmm. unintentional errors from client, right? Accidentally overwriting or accidentally deleting some of the objects mm -hmm. in your Swift cluster. Mm -hmm. And for disaster recovery, you seem to have a multi-regional setup where you actually mm -hmm. replicate data across. Mm -hmm. So for these kinds of bugs, I'm curious as to how Container Sync is addressing it, mm -hmm. because Container Sync could actually propagate all the errors from your primary Swift cluster if you've mm -hmm. actually deleted or overwritten the data mm -hmm. or something else. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas something like versioning uh, could be a feature that could be useful. So I was one, uh, I'm curious as to why you chose Container Sync over some of the other features. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, so the main reason why we chose the container sync because we can uh, make the backup switch cluster independ independently to the main, main switch cluster. So when we uh, notice that some bugs are happening in the applications, so we uh, all we have to do is uh, stop the container backup demo. So we run the container backup demo in each day. And all we have to do is stop the job for the backup. So it is very uh, easy way to keep the data in the backup storage. So we choose uh, the container sync and the independent backup storage to take the backup of the data. Okay, so so you are relying on your ability to detect these errors timely, in, yeah. in a timely fashion. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, is there any other questions? Okay, so that's all. Thank you for coming to this session. <laughs> <laughs>